Greetings in the name of the Lord. From the Greater Mount Carey Missionary Baptist Church, located 3835 Whitewater Road, right here in the city of Valdosta, Georgia. We want to welcome you to another Wednesday Night Word at Mount Calvary. Yes, another Wednesday Night Word at Mount Calvary. We want to invite you to come out to our in-person services every Sunday at 8 a.m. at Mount Calvary. That's located again at 3835 Whitewater Road, right here in the city of Valdosta, Georgia. We also have conference call Sunday school every Sunday at 920. You can join our conference call Sunday school every Sunday at 920 at Mount Calvary. The number to dial is 701-802-5337. That's 701-802-5337. And the access code is 683-1205 in the pound symbol. You can also join our online live stream every Sunday at 1015 a.m. That's right, our online live stream each and every Sunday at 1015 a.m. The link to join us is www.worshipwithmtcalvary.org forward slash live, L-I-V-E. That's www.worshipwithmtcalvary dot o-r-g forward slash live l-i-v-e or you can join us on our facebook page and like mount calvary yes we're glad that you have joined with us on tonight for another wednesday night word in the lord i want to make you aware of a few announcements on uh tonight a few announcements on tonight on sunday april the 14th of Mount Hope Missionary Baptist Church. We had a pastor installation service at 3 o'clock p.m. That's Mount Hope Missionary Baptist Church. We had a pastor installation service at 3 o'clock p.m. Sunday, April the 14th, 2024. This is the pastor installation service will be for Pastor Kenneth Murphy. The church is located 807 North Washington Street, Quitman, Georgia. That's 807 North Washington Street, Quitman, Georgia. Pastor Kenan Murphy and Lady Stephanie Murphy has been a great support to my Calvary Church family. And let us show them our love and appreciation by attending the service. In addition, Mount Calvary will be celebrating the 159th church anniversary on Sunday, April the 28th, 2024, at our 8 a.m. service. Yes, our 159th church anniversary. The fourth Sunday in April, April the 28th, 2024 at our 8 a.m. in-person service. We encourage you to come on out and be a part of this great celebration. The colors will be teal, green, or blue. You may accessorize with black or white if you so desire. We will have our guest churches will be our community churches in the South Lounge area. Our community churches will be coming to celebrate with us, our guest churches and our community will come and celebrate with us. That'll be uh, Payton AME, Second Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church, Francis Lake AME, Hosanna Missionary Baptist Church, and also Irving Hill Missionary Baptist Church. Those, those are our guest churches from our local community will come out and fellowship was on that Sunday at our 8 a.m. service for our 159th church anniversary. You don't want to miss it. That's April the 28th, 2024. Look to see you, you, and especially you at that time for our celebration of our church anniversary. God bless you. Let us go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Father God, we thank you. God, we give you praise. God, we give you glory. And God, we give you another honor for a chance to come back and study and expound on your word on tonight. That your people may get understanding and clarity in your word. Father, we pray, Lord, that you just bless us as we come together in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will get the praise, you will get the glory, you will get the honor. And God, look down on those that stand in this special prayer. Oh, Father God, just touch it from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet. Bless them indeed. Move in a mighty way, God. Just do a great work in their lives, oh God. Heal, set free, and deliver right now, God. Save souls right now, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Father, for being able to come and share the good news of the gospel on tonight with your people, oh Father God. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Give us teaching power on tonight. Amen. And amen and amen. 
Once again, we're glad you join, join us for another Wednesday night word at Mount Calvary uh, Missionary Baptist Church. We honor God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. To all our ministers uh, of the gospel at Mount Calvary, to their spouses, to our deacons, deaconess, mothers, saints, and friends, to my spouse, Lady Evelyn Diane Vincent, to all of God's people in their respective the place, we honor you in the name of Jesus the Christ. You get all the praise and get all of the glory. I want to talk to you from our base scripture tonight, Luke 18, chapter, verse number one. That's St. Luke 18, chapter, and verse number one. And it simply says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. I want to talk to you from this topic on tonight. Prayer is always in order. Prayer is always in in order. Jesus was uh, speaking here in St. Luke's Gospel, the 18th chapter, and he spoke about a parable to them. And to this end, he started out that men ought to always to pray and not faint. If you're praying, you won't be faint. We need to always pray. Prayer is always, always in order. Whatever the situation is, whatever the problem is, whatever the concern is, whatever the worry might be, prayer is always in order. My brothers and sisters, I just want to encourage you tonight to know that you can always pray to God. You can always pray to God wherever you are, whatever is going on, whatever is happening. You can always pray to God the Lord and let him give you what you need in your despair, in your crisis, in your situation, your circumstance, whatever it may be. Prayer is always in order. Amen. It is always, it is always appropriate to say a word of prayer. I don't care if you're in the White House, your house, my house. It's always in order. It don't have to be out loud. It don't have to be, amen, in, in public. But you can do it, amen, at any place, at any time. Amen. You can say a word of prayer. And God will hear our prayers. But we, that, 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 and we need to make sure, I want to let you know tonight, that we need to make sure that our prayers are not hindered that your prayers may not be hindered. We don't want our prayers to uh, be hindered, but we want our prayers, amen, to come through and come through, go through, amen, and be lifted up unto the Lord, amen. But if we really are living and walking in the light as he himself is in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship with one another. That's 1 John 1 and 7. But if we really are living and walking in the light as he himself is in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship with one another. One area of our lives we believe is particularly neglected is the area of our relationships. We simply have hated, heeded the word. We simply haven't, I'm sorry. We simply haven't heeded the word of God where that, that is concerned about our relationships. We fuss with one another, criticize one another, so much that we hinder the forces that God has given us to make us successful in the world. These things will hinder our prayers if we're not connected with our relationships with one another. That's right, strife causes trouble in the spiritual realm. Strife, confusion, fussing and raising sin and all those kind of things. They cause us trouble in the spiritual realm. It does nothing but open the door up for the devil. It opens the door up for the enemy, for Satan. 
you give him a crack, he'll knock the door down. It even keeps our angels from moving on our behalf. It hinders. It hinders things. We don't need anything hindering our prayers. Peter wrote in 1 Peter, the third chapter and seventh verse, he said to live considerably with their wives with an intelligent recognition of the marriage relationship under the woman as physically the weaker, but realizing that you are joint heirs of grace, God's merited favor of life, in order that your prayers may not be hindered and cut off. That's the Amplified version of that scripture. Even in the marital relationships, we want to be in harmony because we don't want nothing to hinder our prayers. Husband and wives need to be on one accord. Parents and children need to be on one accord. You need to be able to get along with your co-workers, your fellow church members. Get along with all of those persons. That nothing will come along and hinder your prayers. All of us need to wake up <coughs> to the danger of strife and start walking in love. Share the light of God's word to own your relationships. Amen. Let the Lord light shine in your relationships. Amen. Because there is strife, there is danger that the enemy will try to bring up against us. Amen. To hinder our prayers and hinder God from moving on behalf of our prayers and hinder the angels that he dispatched to our rescue. Dig in to it and get a revelation of the fact that we are all part of each other. I need you. You need me. <coughs> we all need each other on this Christian journey. We can't make it without one another. We're not an island. We can't, no man can survive by themselves. We need to recognize in Ephesians 4, 3 and 4 says that we are one body and a one spirit and be eager and be eager and strife earnestly to God and keep the harmony and oneness of that spirit. Keep the oneness and the harmony. Amen. Among ourselves, among our lives, among our relationships, among our fellowships, our partnership, our co-workers, our homes, our family, our friends, parents, the children. We need to keep the oneness of the Holy Spirit in our lives to keep the devil from allowing our prayers to be hindered. We need to let the power of God flow in our all of our relationships and learn to walk in his light. <clears throat> it's important that we do not, amen, allow the enemy to hinder our prayers. Prayer is always in order. Another point I want to make is that we need to make sure that our prayers are quality. Not we're not gonna we're not talking about quantity prayers. We're talking about quality prayers. Make sure our prayers are quality prayers. Matthew six and seven says, "But when ye pray, use not vain repetitious, useless words." as the heathen do, for they think they should be heard for their much speaking. Don't use that. Let your prayers be of quality. Some of the most effective prayers are the shortest prayers. Jesus said, peace be still. And the wind and the waves cease. Short prayer. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus came back from the dead. Sometimes the shortest prayers are of quality prayers. Sometimes you don't have time. You might not have time to go into a long uh, prayer conversation with the Lord. And I'm not saying nothing wrong with a long prayer. But you don't have to know when those long prayers are appropriate. But you might need to get a hold of the Lord in a hurry. And all you need to do is utter your prayer out to God. And it's got to be of a quality, not quantity, but quality. Today, there's a new emphasis on the quantity of prayer instead of the quality of prayer. 
People want to know how many times you pray a day, how many times you do this and all that. But it's not how many times you pray a day, but did you pray at all today? Quantity and quality are two different things. Our prayers need to be of quality from our heart, our prayers. Today, we know that people want to do all kind of things. But stick to the basics. Jesus never advocated long prayers. And there are only a few instances where Jesus prayed long prayers. This is not to say that communion with God is not important. Don't misunderstand me. You must commune with God. You must communicate with God. You must have a conversation with God. But make sure that conversation is of quality. And not necessarily focusing on the quantity. It is certainly is but a form of prayer is not only one part of communion with the Lord. You have to spend time with them. Psalms 5, 1, 2 uses the prayer and meditation is interchangeably in that verse. Therefore, communion with God through keeping your mind stayed on the things of the Lord is also a part of meditating and praying. Amen. There are also times in prayer when we need to be still and know that God is God. I need to say it again. There are some times in prayer that we need to be still and know that God is God. Many times we ask the Lord to speak to us. We ask the Lord to speak to us, but he can't get a word in edgewise because we're doing all the talking. God can't get a word in edgewise because we're doing all the talking. So make sure, amen, make sure your prayers are of quality and not necessarily concerned with the quantity. Make sure they are quality prayers, sincere prayers, meaningful prayers, righteous prayers, from the heart prayers. Prayer is always in order. And then, uh, point number three I want to make tonight. We need our prayers to be healthy prayers. Healthy prayers. James 4, 2 says, You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. That you may spend it on your pleasures. Make sure your prayers are healthy prayers. The word amiss means sick, weak, or miserable. You you miss the part, you miss the mark in your prayers. This is saying you won't receive when you pray sick prayers, when you pray weak prayers. When we pray our self selfish motives and just to make it through, that is what we're talking about being a sick prayer. You're praying amiss. You're missing the mark. It's all about you. Amen. God, you, you say, say, God, I'm defeated. Please do something. That prayer needs to go to urgent care because that prayer is on its last leg. You're just praying to be saying something, saying words. But try a different approach. Let your prayers be healthy prayers. Let them be bold prayers. God has a lot coming at me. Dog, God has a lot going on. But I know nothing is too big for you. Lord, have mercy on me. Pray bold prayers. And while you're at it, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Giving the praise and beginning to thank him that the blessings you have for me are so greater and they will overflow to those around me. Pray for somebody else sometime. Those are healthy prayers. Are you praying bold prayers or weak prayers or sick prayers? Are you praying healthy prayers? Are you asking God to turn the situation around that look impossible? Hmm? How, how many miracles are you missing because you're not asking God for the right miracle to happen in your life? Are you praying healthy prayers? Not no sick and weak prayers, but healthy prayers that are focused on what God wants to do in your life. And not always about you, but about what he want to do, amen, for you through others and for others. Ask God big things. Ask God for big things. Don't be stingy when you're talking to the Lord. He's longing to be good to you. God want to do something for you. God want to bless you. God want to move in your behalf. 
but are we asking healthy prayers? And if we know that he hears us, and whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. 1 John 5 and 15. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. Ask God, amen, do some healthy praying. Don't be praying in, in the same mindset. Uh, you thinking it ain't going to happen. You doubting. You're not believing God. You're not trusting God. You're not leaning and depending on God. Those are weak prayers. Those are sick prayers. Get you some healthy prayers. Go in faith, knowing that God will, God shall, and God can do what he says that he will do for you. The, the last point I want to make is in this lesson on the night, prayer is always in order. The answer is on the way. The answer is on the way. I need to say that again. The answer is on the way. When you pray, you can know that you have your request. You can know that you have your request. When you believe and receive your healing, your promotion, or your freedom, things begin to happen in the unseen realm. You don't see it, but God is working in the unseen realm of your life. But if the answer is always in your future, you haven't received it in your spirit. You got to get it in your spirit. What God is going to do, what God, what, what God is going to bring to pass is not what you ask for, but what you believe and you receive when you pray. I need to say that again. What God is going to bring to pass is not what you ask for, but what you believe you receive when you pray. You got to have the faith of God on the inside when you pray, when you ask God for things. Are you believing? Are you receiving what you're believing? Are you receiving what you believe in? You've got to believe in order to receive. Do you know that you have your request if you just believe God and, and wait on God to bring it to pass? It's not just God, I'm asking you to help me break some problem that I'm having. That's good, but it's, it's it, it, in itself, it's not enough. Follow it up with the Lord and I receive it, Lord. I receive what I'm asking you for. God, I'm asking you for this right now, but I'm believing you and I'm thanking you for it because you're going to bring it to pass. See yourself, amen, your prayers being answered. The, prayer, the answer is already on the way. The answer is already on the way and we need to thank him for it, ask him for it and then thank him for it. Ask him and thank him, believe and begin to receive it in your spirit and your mind and your heart, amen. When you pray, you not only believe it, but you will receive it. When you pray, you're not the only to believe it, but you got to believe that you're going to receive it. Now, change your report from I'm hoping to, and it's already done. Change it from I'm hoping this happened. It's already done. I'm hoping I'm healed. No, I'm already healed. I'm hoping I'm uh, 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 coming out of this. No, I'm already coming out of this. I'm out of it. I'm out of it. I'm delivered. I'm broke. I done got a breakthrough. I'm out of it. You got to change your language. Amen. You got to begin to change your language. Then stop saying I'm hoping and just say, thank God it's already done in Jesus name. Amen. You got to know the answer is on the way. It's just a matter of time before what happened in the unseen realm shows up in the natural realm. Amen. It's a matter of time before what happened in the unseen realm shows up in the natural realm. The answer is already on the way. Thanks be unto God. Amen. Prayer. Prayer is always in order. Somebody need to hear this tonight, that prayer is always in order. Whatever it is, put prayer on it. It's always in order. If you put prayer on it, don't let nothing hinder your prayer. On tonight, amen. Make sure your prayer is of a quality prayer and make sure that you have healthy prayers when you pray. Don't pray amiss, but pray, amen, that God will be done in your life. And then you got to have the mindset that I'm, amen, believing and receiving. The answer is already on the way. The answer is on the way. God bless you. Heaven keep you is my prayer.
I pray that we have said something to you tonight to encourage you on your walk with the Lord in this journey. Amen. Knowing that prayer is always in order. My brothers and sisters, maybe you have heard the word tonight and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. I want to invite you to meet Jesus. I want to invite you to receive Jesus. Prayer is always in order. You can say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins and my transgressions. Lord, save me. I want to be right. I want to be whole. I want to be a part of your kingdom. I'm God and sorry for all the wrong I've done in my life, all the sins I've committed. Forgive me, Lord, and receive me. Receive me as your child. In my name of Jesus. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. As simple as that. That prayer right there is always in order. God bless you. Join us, amen, on Sunday at 8 a.m. in person service and every Wednesday night for a Wednesday night word at 7 o'clock p.m. online. May you have a wonderful week in the Lord and God richly bless you, you, and especially you. Let us close out in prayer because why? Prayer is always in order. Father, we thank you tonight for this lesson on tonight. We thank you for this Wednesday night word. We thank you for those that are hearing this and will hear it. Oh, Father God, let them understand that prayer is always in order. They can call on you and cry to you any place, any time in their lives, and you will hear their prayers. Oh, God, we pray now, Lord, you look on us one by one, name by name. Whatever we stand in the need of, you would bless us, oh, Father God, and move in a mighty way. And, Lord, we give your name the praise, give your name the glory, give your name the honor. We thank you for all the things you've done and things you continue to do. Continue to move by your power, by your spirit, and by your anointing, oh, God. Heal, set free, deliver, God, wherever the problem may be, wherever the sickness may be. Oh, God, just work it out in their favor right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, look on those that are bereaved in this hour. Lift them up, oh, God, and comfort them as you know how. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the victory. In your name, the praise, in your name, the glory, and the honor. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest from the Bible, us henceforth, now, and forever. And all God's people say, amen and amen. God bless you. And remember, you don't have any trouble, but all you need is faith in God. Until the next time, be blessed and highly favored of the Lord. God bless.